All right, so to pivot completely hard into this game now, uh, I still do need character introductions because not only, like I said, is our guest character new, but the entire cast at this point, which put me into a bit of a tizzy last night while I was rewriting stuff. Uh, so yes, we'll start with our uh, co-host today. Uh, if you could introduce your new character, describe them, and you know, all that fun stuff, Kelly. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could have you could have told me I can't make a new character. I could have said that, but I'm the I am the GM, not the dictator of the game. That's fair. Okay. Well, the the long and short of it is that um, there seems to be a pattern between the various games we've done where my character always ends up being kind of like a useless selfish piece of shit which it probably does nothing to read from. into there but I, I feel like this one in particular was just he just sucks he honestly was just he's just not a fun character so uh he is just gone he's vanished i mean he actually did uh, he figured out his venture capital ven uh venue and just departed well, yeah, so he did leave the party because he was having an extremely racist moment where he was uh, sent into a panic uh, by our par one of our party members who was uh, a visible minority and his character was canonically racist. So he he ran off and then he got into a terrible adventure and I just don't think we need to come back to him. So instead... Uh, we have uh, an octopus named Ellen Mollusk. That's uh, Ellen spelled E-L-L-O-N. And uh, going hard in the other direction, uh, Ellen is just insanely helpful. So Ellen's background is uh, Ellen roams the land helping strangers in need. Nice. Robin yeah. Hood. Yeah, like Why? I feel like... <laughs> Ellen is exactly the person that I would say Ellen DeGeneres wants to portray herself as oh, just no. like bubbly and everyone's friend and like not hanging out with George Bush and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, that that's, that's Ellen Mollusk. And uh, oh yeah, my unique talent is uh, my distributed nervous system. So, you know, my arm is like equally has its own brain kind of thing. And uh I guess that would make me more reactive, you know? Somebody throws something at me from behind and the arm just goes, wah! What if your, like, arm, what if each limb had its own personality too, right? Because they're all individually sentient. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that, that would like, be a disaster. Kind of really lecherous tentacle, you have to constantly, like, hold back. You're, you're like, can. bro, bro, consent, bro, no, consent! No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it would be easy to get into that character because I do already have one very lecherous tentacle, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ayo! It's his born under punches after dark. <laughs> uh, Except in right. Hawaii, where it's currently the middle of the day. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very warm. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. Page, page. We can't talk about this, ears. but like, what is it like living somewhere warm? Oh my god. Okay, no, it's moving very sweaty. on. Sweaty. Usually wet. Also, it was plus forty here last year. We live somewhere warm now. Fucking kill me. Mm -hmm. I'm like somewhere in the middle, and it's still too warm most days, but. Anyway, um, my character, I've made a dog who is, um, does not have any fur, but has, oh, well, that's the wrong. <laughs> nope, that's it now. <laughs> that's the aquatic that's the, dog. That's the wrong, yeah, that's the wrong, um, window. Sorry, this has taken a long time. Okay, so a dog with, um, sea grapes instead of fur and has a tentacle tail that is, prehensile so we've got nine tentacles so far we might increase nine tentacles yeah. thus far and uh, -huh. uh apparently no name for your character uh, there's a name i think uh name is dagwood but replace the w with the d so it is wag dud wag dud okay yeah all right wag good what no Unique talent because then you could be like wag good by name, wag good by reputation. <laughs> yeah, I believe there was a special talent that you included in your character page. It was the prehensile tail. So it's like that... I'm a dog, but I have an arm and a hand. Oh no, it was um sorry, it's the the tentacle acts kind of like the prognoctopus, like it gravitates towards things that will win. I don't know. 
it was like a sort of like truth finding tentacle, I guess. Yeah, similar to like the uh, a lot the of whole. Truth. But. Well, the sort of like when you put a fucking chicken on a lotto ticket kind of deal where it's like, yeah, it heads towards the right thing every time. Exactly. There's definitely redneck shit that does stuff like that. Please don't question my background. I I, okay, that. we can't get into tangents. You're going to have to tell me about that later. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, our guest's character. Yeah, my character's name is Billiam. Um, they, them. They look like, like you know, Mae Whitman. Um, she was in Scott Pilgrim. She was like the one female ex. She's also Anne, her from Arrested Development. Anyway, it's just sort of like a, a fairly short human with like kind of kind of like strong looking. Um, uses they them pronouns, but like kind of covered just covered in shit. Kind of like Davy Jones's crew from Pirates of the Caribbean. So just like too many barnacles and like kelp just kind of stuck everywhere. But that's it. Nothing like. Good. Just, just, it's an Mostly aesthetic. humanoid? Just... Yeah. Yeah, humanoid. Just annoying, yeah. basically. Um, That's fair. They, so their unique talent is related to their career path. They wanted to go to med school, but then they realized science is actually kind of really hard. And so now they're a doctor of chiropractic instead. Um, so their unique talent is that they can, they can cure almost any illness by like trying to pop your back, but there's like a three in four chance that they just kill you. And then it, it doesn't actually work in creatures that don't have a spine. Atlantis was not the best place to start this business. I mean, <laughs> there's a diverse set of a life there, but I can see why you'd run into problems. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess so. it's a bit of a trade off because it sounds like it would, it would be less effective in an octopus, but it would also be less fatal, right? Yeah, I could try it, hmm. but it's not gonna. It won't kill you. Like it. But it's a good scam, I guess. I mean, much like chiropractic. <clears throat> what? I'm a oh. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Next, you're gonna tell me a naturopologist or whatever they call themselves. <laughs> Naturopath. Naturopath. Well, it's like how I don't they say that Look, chiropractic. I don't pay attention chiro to fake doctors. Oh, I have a doctorate. I have a, I have a piece of paper that says it is a doctorate. Hell yeah. So you're better than a chiropractor. No, I mean the character, not me personally. Oh. <laughs> uh, no. uh, all right. Anyway, so um, we had a side adventure last time. So I'm just going to back us up a little bit and remind us what's happening. So we're in this sort of like um, the Ragnarok stage of our adventure right here. Like Everything just seems to be going wrong. The actual dome city of Atlantis seems to be rising out of the sea on giant mechanical legs, and it is just anarchy everywhere right now. So the three of you find yourself in the central park of Atlantis, and we're going to start with um, Billiam here. Uh, you are in the park for reasons that I'm not going to try to explain right now. You're just at the park because, you know, parks are dope. Drum it up. Uh, support your parks. Uh, and you've seen a middle-aged looking fella who looks a bit like a fake doctor laying prone on the ground. Looks to be dead, but you can sense. You can sense that he's not dead. He is mostly dead. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to so try to pop his back. You're going to try to prop his, prop his back? All right. Yeah. So let's start with the, let's start right off with the body roll here. Oath. It's not the Hippocratic yeah. Oath. It's like the <laughs> knockoff version it. of that, but, but I took it. But you took an oath. <laughs> That's right. All right. So I'm going to get you to roll 2d6s then on your body there. I rolled a nine. A nine. So you got 11. So with a satisfying pop, you hear that back set properly. Yes. And this old withered looking man opens his eyes and looks at you and claps your hand and in a very a voice that sounds like he's about to tell you how to get real he says my name is dr phil mccracken i don't actually remember if that's nicole's character's name i remember phil and that's it or gill no dr. it's gill. doctor oh, gill. it's dr phil mccracken phil Mc... mccracken dr gill <laughs> dr gill no, it was dr gillup mccrawfish that's what it was, yeah. Gil the Crawfish. <laughs> Phil McCracken is funnier, but only in this context. Nicole would hate me. He was Anyways. so close to close to death yeah. that he forgot his own name. Yeah, he forgot his own name. He's like, Dr. Gill, and I need you to know that as an Atlantean ranger, I have failed at my duties. But you still have time to save this city. 
it's time for you to understand what your purpose in life is. I need you. I need you to find the other two. His hands shaking like he's not got much left in this world. So I need you to put on the super suit and save the world. What's the super suit look like? You ever watch yeah, Power Rangers? Did we explain the Rangers to Sarah at any yeah. point? You ever, you, ever, yeah. you ever watch Power Rangers? Well, okay, which color Power Ranger am I going to be? That's a very good question. What color of Power Ranger are you going to be? It's up to you. That, that doesn't feel like how Destiny is supposed to work. Well, you know what? <laughs> Destiny's a giant crock of shit. So. Your Destiny's <laughs> in your hands. It was in your hands all along. All right, I'm only cool with it. I never actually, like, I barely remember power rangers so i'm gonna assume there's nothing like really awful about being the purple ranger because i i just want to be a purple one no i'm pretty sure the worst things they did was like stick the asian in person the yellow in a yellow ranger, suit yeah. and yeah. the black what person in the black suit as far as purple goes i don't think there's a lot of homophobia in power rangers so i think we're good okay yeah yeah all right, all right purple the right there we go i'll do it if i can be the purple ranger hell yeah there you go um so you feel also, we are legally distinct from Power Rangers anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, legally. This is Atlantis Rangers, completely separate from Power Rangers. It just looks a lot like it. Don't Google. Um, <laughs> Don't. You feel... <laughs> you, you feel all of a sudden like, like there's a power inside you and a burst of light happens and a suit starts flying towards you, like gravitationally pulled towards you. It's horrifying. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and you know that that is your super suit. And uh, with a flash of light, all of a sudden, you're dressed and you feel the power coursing through your body. And then Dr. Gill, instead of passing away like it was sort of implied, he just kind of gets up and dusts himself off and just kind of walks away. He's like, well, my work here is done. Yeah, I was through the magic of chiropractic medicine. It, it was impressive. It was very impressive. All right, so that's where we're starting at right there. So, because I have to make all these people come together now in the name of plot, we're going to move over to... Uh, I really wish you would have sent me your character's name page because I've already forgotten it. Oh, I sent Why it in you? the ch chat. Uh, you just said your character is a shaggy dog. Right, it's... um. Oh, well, there it's we like, go. It's Dagwood, but with the D and the W. Yeah. Because like when right, you switch them, go. it looks yeah. like Wag Dude, but it's Wag Wag. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So, yeah, Wag that one. Dude, Wag Dude, did you have like an owner yeah, well. or something before? Are you you an individual unit? Um, have you, have you lived on your own power? My owner is is uh, one of those uh, people that just kind of lets their dog wander all the time, like no leash ever, really. Kind of. Uh, the responsible like, pet owner. Yes. We're we're equals more so than like I pay a bit of rent. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. Very responsible yeah. then. How do you make oh, yeah. money? With my tail. I make predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Gambling. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So, after a productive day of uh, fortune telling, you um, find yourself in the park when the uh, the shaking and the, the city lifting up and all that uh, appears to happen. And... Uh, Without any regard for your own health and safety, you sense through the power of your tail that you need to head towards the brightly dressed purple person in the center of the park. Covered in barnacles and kelp, smelling like Yes, yes, tide. yes. <laughs> just, just reeking of flotsam yeah. right now. I yeah. want to sniff that, so I go that way. And the tail <laughs> All right, is... all right. I mean, that, that does check out for dogs. I had a dog that rolled yeah. in dead stuff all the time. Yeah, I, that. Yeah, I would be. I would attract a lot of strays. Yeah. So yes. You, you, didn't you I warn you that we use the Atlantean F slur? <laughs> the flotsam. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, you've you've come up to this uh, this person you've never met before wearing a bright purple suit. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the tentacle is like, like patting, touching you, patting yeah, you. I definitely have an aversion to things that don't have bones in them. Nice. So <laughs> I am like, not really loving that. The rest of me has bones. 
Yeah, the rest of you is fine, but the back end needs to like keep its distance. Okay. It does its own <laughs> thing. I have no control. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Okay, um, but I'm sniffing. Please. I'm sniffing around and like kind of like circling you a little bit. Are pronouns for wag dude? Um. He him. Okay, sir, sir, please, can you get your tail out of my space? I'm dealing with a lot. Oh. And I back away a little bit. Tail All is right, still like pointing that. at you, but it's not Over in the side. area. Yeah, just pointing. Okay. okay, well, I'm still trying to figure out like, where did my clothes go that I was wearing before the suit conformed itself to my body? And like, that weird doctor guy told me there were two other people, but then he just left. I'm confused. I'm being sniffed and tentacled by a dog. I don't know what's going on. I uh, sit down and I just kind of bark once. Hey, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, look. Hey, look. Oh, okay. Guys, what's going on over here? What's going on over here? Is this dog bugging you? Uh, I run over to you and start sniffing around your feet and the tentacle is also patting you. I'm trying not to show my like visual disgust at having <laughs> so many boneless creatures around me. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, it's been a weird morning. There's this doctor guy. I thought he was dying. So I did medicine, actual med real medicine. All right. Medicine that is proven by a sort of science on this doctor looking person. And then this suit appeared. I don't know what else to say about this. I'm very confused. Do you know what's up with the robot legs on the city? There's a lot going on. I don't, but I would love to help. What can I do? I literally do not know. I just told you I am very confused right now. Hmm. Mm. Well, I think the first thing we should do is we should, we should, uh, oh God, what's the most helpful thing we should do? We should go see someone who knows, uh, what they're, what they're doing. Maybe somebody in charge. Maybe there's police around. I love the police. Maybe we should track down that hobo looking doctor guy. <laughs> oh, that's like one too. I love hobo doctors. <laughs> as soon as you said hobo doctor, I'm kind of taking this into my own, ha own hands, Josh, but you can like take control of the tail whenever, but I'm assuming that, like, it would start... Well, he's not a character. Kind of he can't directing. grab the tail. No. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, no, he can't grab it. I'm just saying, like, he knows where it's, gonna, where it's gonna be well, going. We're gonna we're gonna get you to roll on this, just to make sure your tail completely gets it. So, uh, if you could roll me a, a 2 d sixes, please. I've only got one, so I'm gonna roll it twice. Alright. Is that bad for him? Too bad. Don't forget the first number. <laughs> And a six. Four to six so for ten, ten plus two, ten. so twelve. Yeah, oh wait, so no, sorry. Is that for no, understanding? It is, it is for understanding. Sweet and so your that tentacle doesn't just like know where it's going, it points, it like contorts into an arrow, like some sort of cartoonish shit, like pointing. You need to go that way. Nice. Yes, I thank you for understanding <laughs> my hand gesture. <laughs> Uh, I'm hating every bit of tentacle action, but I do want to figure out where that doctor is and how to get you two away from me. So let's follow the tail. I, I really hate to, you know, table talk here or, or metagame or whatever the, the bad thing is, but do all three of you only have one six sided die? Yeah, I'm using uh, and I'm using. Yeah, I know. I use I use a Google program. Why, do, you, do you want me to mail you some? I have so many. Like <laughs> I'm in the process of moving, and my other set of dice is not here. Okay. I think my partner Sorry, has a bunch, but he's in Let's another continent, so it's his fault. Yeah, yeah that happens. Uh, all right, so yeah, you guys uh, are heading in pursuit of the uh, the hobo doctor that departed after giving you absolutely no stage advice whatsoever. None. None. Very confused. Very purple right now. That's yeah. It's a good look for me, but it's just not what I but was prepared yeah, for. You, you know, you're going out today, and you're expecting just to you know vibe in a park, and all of a sudden you're wearing a pink or a purple suit. Pink suit is our uh, floating uterus character. My apologies. Uh, that's canon. Uh, so <laughs> after a bit of walking, you guys spot him, and he appears to be trying to um, harass a down on his luck. Um, I don't want to say beggar, a homeless person, um, who appears to not want anything to do with him right now. You keep hearing the words get real over and over again. Like that's his only slogan he has. Um, wait, wait, okay, wait, wait. So we've come across 
a unhoused person in this uh i guess in the atlantis dome maybe you're a domeless person but the yes. <laughs> so we've, we've come across this person who's had a rough go who sounds just like dr gill but we also no no, no. Doc, dr gill is harassing this person telling him to get real okay no yeah. I, I feel you now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. No, he's just telling this un- un- unhoused person to get real over and over again. Okay, okay. well, um, I think we should approach him. I want to know where, th- where my clothes went, because they're not underneath this leotard. It is very tight. <laughs> and also, he owes me, because that was actually a very expensive procedure that I did. Um, so let's go, let's go talk to him. Going to confront him? Um, actually, the the octopus, who I haven't actually formally introduced myself to, um, I'm Billiam, by the way. Uh, you want to be helpful? Could you just go ask that doctor, like, where my clothes went and where's my money? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, thanks, uh, Billiam. That's a great name. My name's Alan. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay. Well, you you just want me to go get your stuff back? Sort of. Yeah, I, I can do that. I I want to walk up, or no, I guess I float up to. I swim up. Yeah, you sort of like wriggle over there. Yeah, sort of flop around a bit. Oh, I mean, yeah, I kind of just like wiggle along the. I do this. Up to. <laughs> up to Doctor, right. up to this person. Do I know that? Do I recognize them? Oh yeah. Uh, well, no, you actually wouldn't, because uh, Smegma Glands is gone now. So. Right. Okay. That's uh, right. You you think you've actually? Uh, could you roll me um a uh an understanding, please? Yeah, I can roll. Do you want me to roll right now? Yes. Or in like a second. Like as in now, okay. <laughs> I just, just in case you want to do something first. No, no, no. This is good. You get your dice cam here. Ten. Oh, all right. Ten. ten. And wait, what's wait, your wait. What am I rolling? Underst- yeah, that's a ten. That's a ten. It's just a flat zero. I can't find your stats right now because yeah, I it's zero. Them. Okay. Um, here, look, so I'll just put the stats on. Me. Ah, there we go. I can <laughs> almost read that. Yeah, am I helping? Yeah. I'm just, no. I love helping. <laughs> the character uh, so, is just like my real personality. Ellen recognizes this uh, belligerent doctor man from television. You, you've, you've seen him on the television before while you're sitting at the laundromat washing, I expect, your eight socks. Oh, hey, hey, you're the TV guy. Hey, Dr. Gill, Dr. Gill, Dr. Gill, okay. are you helping him get real? Well, you know, like, um, I kind of, uh, I found myself unemployed after I, uh, I, uh, I, I threw off this, uh, ranger, res- I mean, gave it to the next generation. And so I'm trying to reinvigorate my practice again. You've seen me from television. Do you need an autograph? Yeah, yeah. Are you, you're doing a whole new thing. Like, you got on a whole new voice, too. That's so cool. Yeah, this one is, like, this one is more gravitas. I think I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to, oh, oh, man, I have the worst ADD, Dr. Gill. I, I need to get real. I know you've that's what you've said is the cure, but okay, so what did oh what what did they need? I think they yeah, I think they want an autograph. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's get this autograph. <laughs> and I, I hand over I hand over my character sheet to get autographed. Alright, alright, alright. So with a flourish, Dr. Gill writes his autograph and then stares at you expect like expecting something. So uh do you plan on paying me for this autograph? That's usually why I do this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're going to love this. I can pay you in ink. And I just, like, ink all over. <laughs> <laughs> I want right, to sniff right. that, so I'm bounding yeah. uh, forward. Yeah, you're uh, heading towards just that. Sniff. All right. That, yeah, that's good sniff. stuff. That'll fill your fountain pens for days. Okay, okay. Thanks so much, Dr. Gill. I love I love all your work. I think there was something else supposed to ask you, but... Uh, uh, I I can't remember. And then I I just excitedly, almost like a a bounding puppy dog, I bound back over to Billiam, and I'm like, look, (laughs) look, look. You you see an ink-stained piece of paper that you cannot derive anything from anymore. Was this wasn't what I was wearing before the suit happened? (sighs) Wait, I think I got confused. What am I supposed to do? I'll get it's it. fine. It, no, it's I'll fine. Get we'll, just, we'll just go back to you. Where'd the dog go? I am sniffing Dr. Gill. <laughs> so yeah, hard. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know why I feel responsible for these two, but I do at this point. And also, I yeah. really do at least want my clothes back because I think I left a bus pass in there and I need to get that's, out of this city, probably. That, that's that's fair. That's fair. So let's. I'm just going to go over and try to talk to Dr. Gill, who I assume is now covered in ink and still like harassing yeah. this person. Well, now he's sputtering a little bit because he's trying to get like, you know, when you you suck on a pen before you start writing and it actually just blasts a bunch of ink in, in your mouth. He's you trying to ink deal blasted, with that. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's just dealing with that right now. He's like, <sighs> these. I'm mo- helping him by licking <laughs> his face. <laughs> I'm not paying you for this. I'm not paying you for this. <laughs> um, I hear that, and I'm like, "Whoa, I saw hey, stop hey, I saved down. your life. You better oh. pay me for this." <clears throat> yes, you. Um, future. He tries to affect like a dramatic tone. The new generation of Atlantean Rangers. I think I like a park ranger. I didn't apply for this job. You, you see, he's trying to like. Actually, if you could roll understanding first, we'll see if you can perceive what he's trying to do right now. Well, my understanding is not good. No, I got a four. You got a four? Yeah. Okay. You think that he's speaking earnestly when he says this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You, the prophecy has spoken that the danger to this city would be stopped by three young heroes of the new generation. As you can see by my withered figure here, I'm too old to continue on the legacy of the Atlantean Rangers. And You're pretty frail looking. It's, I've only got a few more get reels left in me, to be completely honest. <laughs> but with your two companions here, I feel you can stop the threat that the president of this city has brought in his wild desire to let this city open up to venture capitalism and property speculation. I'm not entirely sure I'm following. These two are my companions. I am barely holding in dry heaves every time I look at the (laughs) amount of boneless tentacles behind me. It's it might I, I be can, difficult. I can make my tentacles harder if you like. Look, and I had to make them really rigid. <laughs> They're really bony. <laughs> They're like eight big, big boners here. Is that better? I think I treated a kind uh, like edge. Uh, I edge closer to billion. Is this better? Is this better? Like, kind of like full body yeah. dry heaves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know this will be a struggle. I know that you are all scared, but I believe that soon you will understand your purpose. In this great tapestry of this story. He is what do we do with ed- the suits? He's edging away as he's saying this. Like he is trying to make a break for it. Do they get suits? Am I the only one in purple? Arr, arr. <laughs> you just have really to. Really cover them up? <laughs> <laughs> you just need to fall into destiny. And then their suits will appear. He is turned around. He is booking it at this point. He's yelling over his shoulder as he is. Bill, Billy, am I get the sense. I, I, I'm real sorry. I get the sense you want me to cover up. Your, your dry heaves are looking like wetter than usual. Like, is there some kind of way that I can? It's fine. It's know. fine. I'll just. I just need to breathe deeply through my nose for a second here. Just, mm. just let me take a break. Ugh. Um, I still don't know what's happening. I have a suit. You guys are related to the suit. The dog seems to know what's going on. Arr. Um. <laughs> Does the dog yeah, have a the dog. I love dogs, and I like pet the dog with like let's say four of my tentacles. <laughs> nice. Or tentacle hug. I am I licking know. one at a time. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get you Billiam to roll a body roll here. Okay. Uh, I, roll, I rolled a six plus you two. Rolled a six? Eight. Could be worse. Okay. You are just able to keep the contents of your stomach inside. Excellent. Yes. So I live my life. <laughs> just, just barely able to keep it down. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right, and uh, wag dude, you're wag dude now. Um, I don't know if that was the original pronunciation, but I'm doing it that way. Yeah. Uh, I need you to roll another understanding. Seven. Seven. Plus two for nine. So nine. You. 
are momentarily distracted by your uh, from your licking of the tentacles because you notice your tail appears to be giving out another prophecy. It starts to draw in the soft ground of the public oh, park. This is this is new. I don't. Th- I'm surprised by this. I don't. It hasn't <laughs> spoken yet. So it starts drawing, and it says, "Run to the center of the park." And there you will find your key to saving the city. Oh, I can't read. So yeah, (laughs) that's fair. I have no idea what it says. Well, how are the literacy rates of uh, Ellen and (laughs) Billiam? My understanding. Great, I love to read. So middling. (laughs) Middling. All right, so I'll get you both to roll understandings then. See if you're literate enough to read this very prominent message. <laughs> they can read it. They rolled a two. They can oh. read it. <laughs> can they understand? Nine. What did Ellen get? I got a nine. You got a nine? All right. Well, I'm glad one of you can read. Uh, you can see what I got. You got the little grayed this out. This is why I went still. to like oh. chiropractic doctor school and not doctor school. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So while, uh, while Billiam is sort of scratching their head, not entirely sure how to proceed here. Ellen realizes that the note is telling them to run to the center of the park. I run to the center of the park. I will. I will cautiously walk after these two. All right. I, I'm bounding around, following. Have you, uh, Ellen? Have you ever uh, watched one of the 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 Batman movies where like he's got all the different costumes, like those glass cases, in case he's yeah. gotta go like in 90s mode for whatever reason. Um, Retro night at the club. Exactly. Uh, You see, in front of a small pod, two glass cases with colors of suits that I don't know yet, because I actually forgot to ask you guys what colors you want for suits. So, all right, we got a crimson red. Uh, I expect that's what it is. All right. Burgundy kind of deal, and Ellen, if you were to have a super suit color, what would it be? Um, I think God, what would Ellen like? Um, uh, to be friends with George Bush. Yeah. So, I think what we, I think Ellen, uh, I think Ellen should have the the white suit, and not because we're rehashing. <laughs> we already we already made the the joke in the first episode. But because I think it really uh, sets us up well for me, like accidentally soiling it with ink. That's it fair. That, that's that's a good bit. That's a very good bit. All right. So, um, upon looking at the glass cases, they begin to vibrate, and large cracks appear in the glass, and the suits burst out of there. And despite looking humanoid when they first appeared in the glass case, they appear to reform themselves to fit over your freakish non-humanoid bodies. So mine looks like one of those... just got, like, barnacle lumps all over. (laughs) (laughs) There's, like, a piece of kelp just poking through, like, like a seam. Yeah. 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 The fucking neck seam or something like that. It's got, like, like a boob window, but it's just, like, barnacles and kelp. (laughs) Yeah, there's (laughs) kelp spurting out of it. You're just, like, showing off your barnacle cleavage? Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, um, the suits have now since attached themselves. And as soon as they finish wrapping themselves around the two new rangers, you hear a booming voice all around you, like it's inside your head. And it goes, chosen ones. I hear it simultaneously throughout my distributed neural network. Not yes, yes. Body. Yeah, you're getting like nine voices at once here. Which oh, is probably yeah. not doing well for your like all fa- no all factories knows. Um, yeah, it's ruining my sense of smell. There's I so mean, much audio input, I just can't smell shit. You can't smell shit. You've all been uh, there. Yeah, your audio senses are just being overwhelmed right now by this. Uh, actually, roll a body right now to see if you can even comprehend what's happening because it's <laughs> Me? all happening. Yes, because there's so much just stimuli at once. Uh, that's an eight plus two. All right. Uh, so yeah, you're able to just like restrain yourself enough that you can you can still understand the words though being 
like overwhelmed by all the the noises happening at once and it says chosen one you are the saviors of this city the ones who came before have failed step into the pod in front of you and accept your destiny as saviors of atlantis I'm just really confused because I don't remember signing up for any kind of like weird ranger lottery. So I'm not sure how <laughs> I was chosen. I didn't put my name down. I'm really careful about that. I get a lot of spammy emails and you know, you don't study your information very hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing they really teach you at chiropractic school is how to like very quickly like cut all ties with people around you. But it makes sense. It makes sense. You want to you want to go after new marks after all. Right. You don't want to be caught up in that liability. I make an assumption that my uh, super suit will no longer. No, no, I'm trying. I'm, I'm a nice person trying to be helpful. Uh, <laughs> Billiam, Billiam, can I? Can I? Is is it okay with the, that I touch you with my now suited arms? Why? Because I, I, I mean, you've been calling them tentacles, and I, you know, I should. I, I don't want to be mean, but they, they are, they are arms. If that helps. But why do you need to touch me with them? Oh, I, I was just gonna pull you aside, but I guess I could do that verbally. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Okay, I verbally Is the dog going to overhear? Is that the I problem? I verbally pull Billiam aside. I've got great hearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I honestly, like, my my character is not even trying to not be heard. I just like pulling people aside because it makes them feel important. Okay. Okay. Bill, Billiam, I know, I know you didn't ask to be here, but I don't think any of us asked to be here. And But I think you're great. And I I'm going to cut you off right now. I understand this is a very good motivational speech and you're trying to make me feel good, but I'm just accepting it at this point. There's too much weird shit going on. I'll step into the light. Let's just... Yeah, it's fine. But don't touch me with the arms. Suited okay, otherwise. yeah, that's fine. I, I, uh, you, you, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead. Whatever you, whatever you want. I'm in the pod and uh, I guess not really wagging my tail because it has a mind of its own. But wait, I'd say waving your butt in an attempt to wave the tail, like you know, yeah, like when a black lab like goes stabilized. way, when the <laughs> yeah, black the lab is going is way too all. hard. The butt is moving. Yeah. 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 Good idea. Good idea. Yes. Uh, <laughs> How big is the pod? It's it's uh, large enough to fit like five people. In okay. It, so okay, so a humanoid, a dog, and an octopus. They're gonna fit in pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. especially since okay. the octopus okay. can apparently squeeze in any goddamn thing. Yeah. I oh and yeah don't, wouldn't you like to know it? Um, I <laughs> uh, I follow last because I kind of like slink forlornly and I like look at the prepared speech I had and I just kind of like tear it up really badly. <laughs> and hope no one notices. <laughs> oh yeah, you know you just you 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 don't want to push your your bits on people and then I like jam my <laughs> smile back on and I hop into the pod. I'm like, all right guys, let's go to adventure. <laughs> the the pod seals behind you with a sharp hiss and the rumbling while already very vicious as this city on the mechanical legs is slowly stretching towards the surface of the ocean from the very bowels of the bottom of the sea you see another crack appear and a fist burst from this crust and Another giant mechanoid robot emerges from the crust of the earth and the pod heads towards it. You have any comments while this is happening or are you just kind of in shock? I don't know if I can see it. Is the front of the pod the big window? Like just like oh, yeah, yeah. Totally... It's, a, it's, a, okay. it's like a transparent thing that how, just like how big is the robot? It looks to be almost as big as the city on its mechanical leg. That's quite oh, large. wait. Is it... That's ours? Well, the pod's towards headed it. towards it. Oh. Yeah. yeah, like, are we are we on autopilot here? Yeah, yeah, you can't control this thing right now. Okay. Arr, arr. I'm really excited. <laughs> That's kind of why I was like, I, I, I'm just sort of assuming something exciting is about to happen because... Like, th this pod has started moving itself and, like, yeah. are there buttons? Are there Are there things? Not at the moment. It looks like there's just like a sing, like a, a panel for you to lean on, but no buttons on it or switches or anything. Okay, I lean on the panel. All I'm right. I'm trying to think about like 
it would probably have pneumatic devices kind of like moving it around I'm like that's kind of like bones and bone structures so i'm like maybe maybe i could get something out. maybe i could work something out here i might be able to pop this robot's back you might, you might, you might be able to pop this robot's back yeah i might be able All to right. make a client out of this robot <laughs> <laughs> Well, as you head we towards jump into it, our, like Mulan song, just like, I'll make a client out of you. And... <laughs> yeah. Um, as you approach it, you see that in the chest of the robot, there is a hole that looks like it will fit the pod that you're in into that hole. Like an ovipositor. <laughs> are, are we certain? Are we certain that it's like aimed to that hole? Yes. So we're pretty stands. ovipositive? You're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and as it as the pod slides into the hole oh man this is a really erotic episode <laughs> I'm sweating you hear we're underwater right yes so this is, a, wet, this is a pretty wet yeah. hole that we're going into this is a pretty wet hole that you're going I into right now All right, just yeah. sopping <laughs> in fact um, you hear a sharp hiss as it connects to the machine and the panel that Ellen is leaning on all of a sudden has a bunch of touch keys on it. Now, I need you to roll a body quickly, Ellen, to see how fast you react to the fact that you're leaning on a bunch of touch buttons now. Oh, like they just emerged under me? Yeah, yeah, like all of a sudden they glow up. Like, like when you put, take, take your phone out of like um, sleep mode or something. All of a sudden you uh, can type again. Yeah, so I got a eight plus two is 10. You got, you're getting really nice rolls today. It's actually very inconvenient for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even cheating this time. I know. The good character, uh, good rolls. <laughs> I guess. I mean, is that is that like a message for you, Kelly? Uh, no, I don't learn things. That's fair. I don't think any of us do, really. Uh, so, noticing that the, the buttons start glowing, you, you jerk up in time to pre prevent pressing any of them randomly. Okay. Yes. Um, so, okay, uh, can I look at the panel? Absolutely. Can I like, discern anything from the panel? Roll an understanding. I have yes, my Sasha. friend two paws up on the edge of the panel. All right. Look, I'm looking I'm, at it. I'm hoping for a tail prediction. I'm now also feeling kind of competitive with Ellen for some reason, where I feel like they're <laughs> trying to take over this little group. So I'm going to roll yeah. under, understanding too to see if I can devise anything. Hell, hell yeah, let's do it up. So I see, see me standing at the panel and you're like, I know she's trying to understand it. I'm going to understand it harder. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you can roll your understanding then. Um, I got <laughs> a 10, 10 plus zero. 10 plus 0, and you have 10 plus 2, right, uh, Ellen? No, it's a 10 plus 0. A 10 plus 0. Oh, man. Oh, wow. So okay. at, at the same time, you both understand that whoever presses the biggest button on the monitor gets to take the head position of this giant robot, and you both go for it at the same time. Well, I this feel like my arm gets there first because of my distributed neural network. It just goes before my brain can... Well, we'll find out with the body roll. But what if I ask you, like, while I am doing it, I'm like, oh, please don't. And because you really like pleasing people, <laughs> it would be very conflicting for you if I asked you not to do something nicely. <laughs> Ooh, that's a psych roll. Let's see if you actually, that's before we do the oh, body no. roll. Roll a psych roll to see if you can, like, play mind games like that. <laughs> no, it's a six minus one. Kind of five. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to say you so don't. So it's like a you, race you, between you, my <laughs> reflex to hit things and my reflex to help people. Yes. Yeah, but, but I was really unconvincing yeah, when I said yeah. it. So I said please, mm. but I clearly sounded like I was being a jerk. Yeah. If you could not do that, uh, kind yeah, of deal. Basically like, oh, uh, yeah. we. Uh, but yes, we'll get you both through a body roll here. Uh, you get a bonus, Ellen, because of your individual distributed neural network thing. Um, seven plus two, so I got nine. Nine. Uh, I can't see what the second die is because the volume bar is in the middle. Uh, I got a three plus... Well, you can't see the other die. Uh, it's definitely a six. Yeah, sure. No, I got Don't. a three plus two. So five plus... And you have a plus two in body? Or what do you have for body? I don't remember anymore. Ellen. Me, yeah, With, no, plus two. Yeah. Three plus, plus two? two. Three so plus two. Five. Okay, you got five overall plus bonus of six. Not bonus of six, but a bonus of one goes to six. And you said you got uh, what, Billiam? I got a seven plus my 
uh, two. So I got nine. Yeah. All right. So despite your neural network theoretically being faster, Ellen, it for some reason got its wires crossed and couldn't hit it in time. So wait, you said you were going to give me a bonus. I did. I gave you a plus one bonus there. Oh, that's still not enough. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, I'm not very smart, but I am like very stubborn. <laughs> so you hit the button and all of a sudden a small hole appears under you and you drop down and a pneumatic tube system, much like a mail delivery system in a building, brings you up to the head of the um of the mech. Uh the two holes appear underneath Wagdude and Ellen, sending Wagdude to the legs and Ellen to the arms. That is way far. Yeah, I, right. yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, Alex checks out. And he's got eight arms. <laughs> or she's got and you it. see, El, uh, Billiam sees a massive panel in front of them. Wagdid sees two levers that they should be able to grip even with their paws. And Ellen sees um, four individual levers in front of them. Just, just four levers. Four levers. Is there anything else? Is there any buttons? Just those four levers. All right. Uh, so then I, I put four of my arms, like one on yeah. each lever. Yeah. Um, and then I I put the uh, two of my other arms like behind my head to show how casual yeah. I'm being. Yeah. <laughs> and the other two are giving like the double deuce, but it's like <laughs> I'm sticking out like one sucker on each. Sounds good. So, how, oh yeah, I guess, how are you, how are you floating in the air? Uh oh, I assumed there was like water in this cockpit or something. I'm really there strong. I'm just holding myself <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> you're just holding yourself up by the levers. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, so that's what you're doing right now, Wag dude. What are you doing? Uh, sniffing. Yeah, definitely sniffing? sniffing everything. Yeah. You're sniffing. All right. All right. Get you to roll one more understanding roll then. Uh, good thing I'm a smart dog. <laughs> plus two, so that's three. <laughs> um, three plus two is five. I did a, I did a good roll. <laughs> your uh, your tail seems to have a mind of its own right now, and it grips one of the two levers and pushes hard on it. What? Now the other two, when that happens, you you feel the robot lurch forward on its right leg, and nothing else. <laughs> uh i is like is there anything in my cockpit that would indicate how to move the arms there is a thick learner's manual that looks to be about 300 pages sitting beside the lever and it says okay. learning mecha arms for dummies <laughs> is there like a braille version there's no braille version Okay. That because that would make really good use of my extra arms. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Then uh, I I flip. Okay. I I take one of my free arms. Uh, my deuce flipping arms because I realized. Uh, I'm gonna drop both my both my deuces because I suddenly feeling hubris. Uh, <laughs> and I just grab the book and flip it open to like a random page, uh, just to see if there's anything I glean from one page. All right. If you could roll. An understanding here. Uh, that's a seven. It's a seven? All right. You see a very basic diagram where you see the two outer levers control the uh, Y axes of the arms, per se, where it's like this, basically. And the two interior ones control the elbow movement like that. Okay. Uh, I start trying to think of math and like geometry and my head starts spinning. So I just jam them all forward. <laughs> Billy, you see on one of the monitors that's in the head there. Yeah. You all of a sudden see the two arms of the Mecca lunge forward with the fists detaching um, with cables attached to them, I should note. And they swing towards the giant domed city that's stand, starting to stand up and just deck it as hard as it can. And the city lurches back and recoils. 
Um, do I Am have I some radio sort of, like, con- intercom Are we in radio system? contact with each other? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys I, have I'm assuming I can yeah. see, but nobody else can see. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Hey, uh, Billiam, did that, did that help? Define help. I think we're uh, fighting the city. Arr, arr. <laughs> so it turns out you can fight City Hall. Okay, and so I just, uh, I pull them all back and push them all forward again. <laughs> the, do I have uh, any like controls or am I oh, just have, like all I can do is sh- monitor no you have a shit ton of buttons okay yeah no I'm having a I'm trying to can you slow down here I'm trying to whew, wiping sweat off my brow well <laughs> and barnacles just flying everywhere trying to figure out like trying to trying to figure it out up here I got a lot going on well I'm gonna get you to roll an understanding for me one more time a uh, seven. A seven. Yeah. All right. You see amongst all the dials and buttons and all that on your monitor, you see one giant red with with like the yellow and black stripes around it, like in case of emergency, red button. Yeah. I am deciding that not being able to find my clothing and suddenly being in a robot I'm not prepared for. Like, I basically have children that are also my own body, and I didn't sign up for this. This is an emergency. Um, so I slam the button. I'm not prepared for parenthood. Yeah. All right. The uh, eyes of your robot uh, glow red. And... It's in the crypto now. All of a sudden... An explosion of light emerges from those eyes and strikes the dome, and there's a massive explosion. And that's where we call it for this week. I think we're doing good. I mean, you're fighting a city, which is wow, pretty dope. We, we, we knocked out the part of the city that plays the dramatic music. All right, I forgot you have a... It was overrated. No, we don't have to. It's good. That's it. We did it.